My dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 Days of Prayer. Today is day 18, and we are glad to have you here. It's on a Sabbath morning, and allow me to say, Happy Sabbath. I'm glad that you chose to be part of this ministry. It's a blessing, however, when we come before the Lord to seek Him in prayer. And before you go to church, uh, if you are in tune this morning, or perhaps could be watching it in the afternoon, depending on your time or the evening, but uh, before you go to church, just a few minutes, that we can commit ourselves to the Lord as we go to church. Uh, the text we are sharing today is from uh, the book of Psalms, number 73, and we read verse 25 and 26, the word of God says, Whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Verse number 26, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart, Portion forever. I'll read one more time. Psalm 73, number 25, and verse 25 and 26. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. As we speak from this text in the next few minutes, by your presence, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> there are times when we go through difficulties and challenges in life, uh, and we feel so much broken, so much rejected and rejected. We feel we are so lonely, and even God himself has hid himself from us. Such experiences are very common. They're not new to us. They've been there before. The author of this particular psalm, who is a friend of, a friend of, of David, uh, he, according to Asaph, he went through a trying moment, an afflictious moment, and he lost it. He felt broken. He felt God was not with him. He felt rejected. In fact, before it comes to this verse number 25, when you read from verse number 21, it's very interesting. He says, in that situation, my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Uh, some, some version says, I was senseless and ignorant. You know, being afflicted and you lose yourself through affliction passing through trials in life and until you lose your senses. I mean, what this text is saying that, you know, there are difficulties that come, can, can come your life, your challenges can come your way until you, you start even doubting God himself. Talk about death. At times, death can be very devastating. Death of a loved one, it, it, there's nothing that can explain how one feels when he has lost a loved one. Imagine losing a loved one, and especially when you have trust in the Lord, you're praying, but then God seems not to answer. At times we have death through accidents, unexpected death, and, and, and things just happen, and you're there struggling to understand where was God, and why did these things have to happen? This way? You, you've just been working well, employed at your workplace, and, and things have been well, but all, boom, from nowhere, from nowhere, Things start turning around and, 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 and becoming shapeless and before you know there's a light on your desk and you're shown the door and you don't know even where to start. At times your marriage could be doing well but, and you're good people, you're serving church, you're, you're, you're nailed down or deaconess or committed in church, you're giving your tithe and offering and everything is okay. But boom, something happened, disrupts you and, and your marriage is going down the drain. You're praying, you've called this person, that person, they're trying to intervene, nothing seems to change. You wonder where is God? Could be your child who is sick and, and you're watching them or maybe they've been addicted to drugs. They're, they're being drained and swept away as you watch hopelessly. You're praying but God seems not to answer the times. When life becomes meaningless and appreciating God's power in your life becomes meaningless. This text speaks of that situation and says, 
I was there and, 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 and I, I could not understand how I became senseless. I became foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast because of what I was going through. But, but, but then he says in verse number 23, nevertheless, I was continually with thee. He says, God, even in that moment when I was complaining and, and murmuring and, 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 and talking bad things about you, I, I, I never allowed my heart. You know, times you, 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 you can be talking ugly things before the Lord because of what you're going through. Not, you don't mean it. It's just a situation you are in. And, and that's what's happening. But then this other says, even so in that situation, I never allowed my heart to wander away, to doubt the presence of God and his love upon my life. And so in verse number 25, he says, Whom have I in heaven apart from you, God? In my crisis, in my afflictions, in my trials, in my tribulations, whom do I have? apart from you God. He says, I have only you and there is none upon earth that I desire beside me. Think of Job who would lose everything. Uh, that twinkling of an eye, he has lost everything. Children is all, I mean, all children dying instantly, you know. Uh, what a horrible experience losing property, losing children and everything, including your flesh. And you're there still waiting upon the Lord and trusting in the Lord. No wonder Job's wife, she just became a woman. She's just a practical person, a practical Christian because you're, you, 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 you are a human being. And she turns to the husband and tells, come on, my husband. I know you're a friend of God, but I doubt whether God is your friend. Who does this kind of thing? Who allows Evia's power such kind of things to happen? You have lost everything. I've lost uh, the seed of my, of my womb. And you're still here talking about this God? What a God can do such kind of things? In fact, she, she, she's suggesting to Job, just, just curse him. Curse this God that, that, that we have nothing to do with him. You see, she didn't mean it. She didn't mean it. She, didn't mean, she, she, was, she was overwhelmed. And so those moments when you feel overwhelmed, the scripture is advising you never to allow your heart to wander from God. Yes, in this world we shall go through tribulation. Jesus said, but says, be of good cheer because he has overcome. And you can say, like face over here, whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Verse number 26 says, my flesh and my heart faileth. Hmm. But hmm. my flesh and my heart may fail. But here he says, faileth. Presently, this is the situation I am in. My, my flesh and my strength are failed. I am I'm lost of ideas. I, I'm lost of options. I, I'm lost of anything I know that could be a source of my help. I'm here hopelessly, yet waiting upon the Lord. He says, my heart and my flesh faileth, but God is the strength of my heart. I love this, and this is in my portion. And I hear Paul asking, what can separate us from the love of God? And he goes ahead to talk about things that ordinarily ought to separate us. Tribulations. You know, conflicts. Famines. Unemployment. Struggles of every kind. He says, no, even in these kind of things, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The love of God will never leave us. My dear viewers, this Sabbath morning, I want to invite you as you prepare to go to worship, or wherever you are, whether in church or wherever you are, God cares for you. God loves you. The God of the mountain is still the God in the valley. He cares for you despite of the pain you're feeling today. He loves you despite what you see today. And I want to encourage you, brethren, that may we hold hand to the Lord. Let him be our refuge and our strength in the time of need. He's such a friend. And I hear one musician saying, what a friend we have in Jesus. And in that text, he says, what needless pain we bear because we do not learn how to take everything to him in prayer. 
You see, God is waiting to address our emptiness, our brokenness. He is waiting to deal with our pain. He is waiting. He knows how to do it, to fix our brokenness. And we can trust him one more time. You can trust him with that condition, with that situation, with that circumstance. We, you, you can trust him. And I'm here to pronounce today that weapon which he cast against you shall not prosper in Jesus' name. Just hold on to your faith. We're upon the Lord. And we shall see the deliverance that comes from God. Just walk into church on this Sabbath and worship him in confidence and waiting upon him and you shall see the miracle he's going to perform. Join me as we pray. Gracious Father in heaven, indeed, whom we have in heaven, apart from you, what do we desire here on earth if not you? Our heart and our flesh may fail but you are our strength and our portion forever. Yes, indeed, in this world we are going through tribulations. But Lord, when we imagine and think of the glory of the, the, the victory of our sin, the glory of the new Jerusalem that we are preparing for us, we, we, we admire and get committed for, for, for we, that the joy thereof and the good things thereof cannot compare with the momentary trial and afflictions we are going through. We, we, will, we, will, we are willing, Lord, this morning to say like Job, I know in whom I believe. The Lord, our faith will not waver because of the current situation we are faced with. And I'm praying for my viewer. Lord, I don't know what they're going through. It could be a family issue. It could be a work-related issue. It could be anything, health or anything. But it, they're in their lowest moment when, as it were, they are losing their senses. Lord, we're inviting you in these ugly, desperate situations of our lives that you can come and gather those broken pieces and bind them together that your children may have hope one more time. Gracious Father, we don't have any other source of hope apart from you. When your children are crying to you, your promise to hear. Even before they speak, you are going to answer. And Lord, we are seeking you this morning that you may answer the needs of your children as many as they are presented. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for this moment with the Lord. Thank you for choosing every time to be here for this for the days of prayer. This is the source of your blessings. And I thank you for being a blessing too to many people by sharing this message. And if you've not been sharing, I invite you to share. But also inviting you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please just click that button that any time we have such programs may come to you and you may continue being blessed. Remember to pray for the seven-member list that you have. Let's continue praying and praising. Let's continue pleading. Let's continue interceding. Let's continue asking in faith. And indeed, miracles will be wrought by God. Till tomorrow, God be with you.